And on today's show, how to leverage link benefit coverage. Part two of this week's series on selecting the right long-term care coverage with long-term care expert, Maria Sarchi. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial economist and contributing author to Backroom Technician in Innsmouth. Let's get down to business. Welcome to day two of this series. Maria, I just really appreciate uh, yesterday's show, especially second half. We set the table, put the menu of options out Mm -hmm. on the table. There are really a lot more alternatives. And before we get into some of this that we want to talk about now, I just want to touch one thing that you talked about. I never thought about combining, maybe I'll do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I might be able to patch quilt a real thorough long-term care coverage scheme using maybe hybrids and standalones or maybe accelerated benefits. So there's a lot of play here. There most certainly is. As I said in yesterday's show, um, today a client has so many choices and solutions available to them. And they can look at customizing their premium, maybe look at some of the old coverage that they had and convert it to the new kind that has the long-term care components to it, or take some of that household income that maybe they had earmarked for something else to use as a leveraging tool to help them ensure a safe retirement. Well, let's talk about your example today of a female, Mm -hmm. age 60, and she has what you call, I love this line, these twin risks, Mm -hmm. living too long, Yep. And dying. Yes. Talk about how we're going to combine that and why we can leverage long-term care and and actually make this happen for both of those risks. Yeah. This link benefit concept, Steve, is one in which the client has the opportunity to use the benefit if they have a care event or leave it as a legacy asset if they don't. Twin risks are covered. Living too long and needing care or dying too soon. And especially when you're talking to someone who's a self-insurer, maybe put some money aside Mm -hmm. for that rainy day or secure retirement by putting a six-figure dollar amount in a bank account someplace, when you could show them how they can take those dollars, and I think we've got an example to talk about, and leverage them to sometimes four or five times that amount for a long-term care event, it seems like a type of discussion that somebody would want to pursue. Well, I'm looking at one of these examples. I have a female, 60, and she invests Mm $100,000. That creates a $450,000 death benefit. But is that death benefit now convertible into these living benefits if I don't use it? See, this is where where I want to make sure we're clear. Yeah, and the $450,000 is actually the long-term care pool that she Mm -hmm. creates. So what's the death benefit pool in there? About $150,000. Okay, so so let let me back up. So the hundred thousand is going to generate about one hundred fifty thousand death benefit. Correct. The four hundred fifty thousand is the long term care accumulated benefit. So I, I as I can pay down to that, I can spend it all the way up to four hundred fifty thousand. You can yes. And if you don't need all of that benefit, whatever's mm-hmm. remaining of the life insurance benefit, the death benefit, that's what passes on when the insurer dies. Now I'm, I'm as I'm taking my long term care benefit mm-hmm. down, is my death benefit then also going it down? It is yes. Remember, you've got a $150,000 pool to work off of. So you have play there between, first, when you tap into the benefit, second, how long you tap Mm -hmm. tap into the benefit. And as we talked about on yesterday's show, combining some of these solutions gives you even more leverage power to decide how long you want the coverage to last, to decide how much of the life insurance benefit you want to protect as a legacy asset. Now, if I use, just in my curiosity, if I use all of my benefits, living benefits for long-term care, I really don't have much left in my death benefit or maybe nothing at all. Well, in most cases, you'll have something called a residual benefit. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. It's usually 10% Mm -hmm. of the original life insurance value, but it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. The key driver behind this kind of solution is that you want to take the money you've set aside, the $100,000 in this scenario, and multiply it in value so that it's leveraged and it's working harder for long-term care. Now, the the, uh, example I gave was a single deposit. Can I do annual payments and can I do, they used to let us do 10 pays. Yeah, you can. Can we still do that? You can. In the link benefit space, you can do 10 pays. In some cases, you can even do an annual pay forever. So there's lots of alternatives there Mm -hmm. for how you fund this. The key benefit driver of a link benefit life solution is that the client is concerned about long-term care first and legacy assets second. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when you position long-term care in any of these link benefits, is that always the case? The LTC is the driving motivation. The secondary will be the life and or the annuity. Yes. In the link benefit life space, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Now, in the accelerator, it's kind of flipped, isn't it? It most certainly is. So the the opposite way. So my life insurance and my annuities are the prime movers. Right. And the accelerated benefits are secondary. Correct. Got it. Okay. In that case, the individual has said to us, remember our key questions. Mm -hmm. Question two, what are your key benefit drivers? 
in this instance, we know the individual said life insurance is most important to me. Mm -hmm. The ability to tap into my benefit, if I need it, is a great to have. Okay, so that second question now becomes a huge uh, steering uh, for yes. our discussion. That's a steering question here. I need to know where, where which way am I going? Right, at? because here where here's where things can go very wrong. If you put all of the solutions we've talked about in front of a consumer, no, not a great conversation. There's so much information that's coming at them. As advisors, when we can ask the questions and then follow the lead based upon the answer, mm -hmm. now you're putting in front of that consumer customized solutions that we know will have meaningful impact to them. Well, that's a huge issue because I don't want to drown them with just ancillary information and product lines that aren't really in world right. in the arena that we're talking about. That's right. We come back from the break. We're going to talk more about annuity linked benefits, touch a little bit about that and talk about the power that this has. This is great. The old phrase, you can't lose it now, right? That's the best. We'll be right back. It's not how much money you make for your clients, it's how much money they get to keep, especially in retirement. But retirement income could cause Social Security benefits to be taxed. One tax advantage alternative is life insurance designed as a non-modified endowment contract that can generate tax-free income without taxing Social Security benefits. These contracts offer differing funding options depending upon your client's risk tolerance. For more information on how life insurance can be part of your retirement planning, just email me at steve at downtobusiness.tv. Brought to you by Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Welcome back to the second segment. Of course, again, we're with Maria Sarchi. We're talking about linked benefits. Let's talk about annuity linked benefits. Yes. I love this one, right? No more lose it, use it or lose it. Right. Well, you know, the annuities are interesting because we know coming out of these past 10 years, the number of annuities that are floating out there. And mm -hmm. with purpose, they were designed to do what? Mm -hmm. Accumulate uh, tax deferred and you're supposed, supposedly income later. Yeah. And so when you talk about risks in retirement, why are annuities mm -hmm. purchased in the first place? To do what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're, we're buying it for retirement. That's right. So yeah. what better way to use an existing asset such as an annuity? Now with the Pension Protection Act, being able to tap into that benefit without having to pay income tax on it for long-term care purposes, it's a win for the client. Old kind of annuity, new kind of annuity. I would say my... my thinking process is a non-qualified annuity with this power is now we're talking about tax deferral and for LTC specific right tax free money coming out to pay direct benefit to, to pay direct benefits for our for our long-term care event that's right you know but there's a wow. key there's a key element to, or key point here to make in that with the annuities unlike the linked benefit life that we spoke about in the mm -hmm. last segment you're not quite going to see the same leverage so we used a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar deposit for our six-year-old female client with the, in the annuity space we're looking at a total benefit pool for LTC at 250,000 so you're not going to see a really big jump the way you might mm -hmm. with the life products I think that'll change over time. Mm -hmm. This is still fairly a newer concept into our marketplace. And right now we're looking at fixed products. We know that'll change as our annuity environment continues to change. Oh, well, this reminds me of a thing. I need to dip back into the first segment for a second. So if I take income out of my life, linked life um, hybrid, I take that out to pay my LTC. I'm not paying any taxes on that either. For right? the long-term care riders, correct. Okay, so I have two products that have tax deferral that allow me to take money out tax-free as long as it's for my benefit, my LTC benefits. True. To me, that's a huge issue. And I, 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 you need to put a pencil, not only on the leverage, but the actual cost of money and tax after tax numbers when you're talking about these results. That's right. So when you look at hybrid annuity solutions, the income accumulation is what the client's really driving for, protection in case they need it for an emergency. Mm -hmm. Again, I've said this before, what bigger emergency can there be in retirement than a long-term care event, which we know from last week's start of the mm -hmm. show, can average about $80,000 a year. Yeah, when I think about the high probability of most Americans having to experience some cost in long-term care, whether it's assisted at home, whether it's an actual full facility, the odds are so high and we're living so much longer, so it's just gonna increase our numbers of the probability. I'm looking at this Gallup poll in 2009. I find it remarkable. 83% intend to use their annuity as a financial resource to avoid being a burden, this is the key part, a burden on their children. Yeah. And I think people are starting to look at long-term care the same way. I wanna do this so that it's not a burden on my children. Yeah. Because you were talking about in our series last week, that many caregivers are coming out of pocket. I think you told me something like some people are coming out at $50,000 yes. out of their own pocket. They can't work, so now they lost wages, True. and now they have 
sweat equity, times involved in all this. That's right. I mean, this is really a big deal difference. And I don't think, again, some of our advisors are saying, wow, you're introducing this a brand new concept for retirement planning. That's right. This should be part of our retirement planning. That's right. So, Steve, you've been an advisor, right? What's the average age you talk to consumers about solutions such as an annuity? An annuity, I start talking about it uh, pretty early on. I, I, I want to do non-qualified mm -hmm. as well as qualified. Mm -hmm. I like to have two different kind of tax treatments. So I'll go as young as I can. Yeah, so let's go back to last week's question to me about what is the right age to start doing long-term care planning? Well, I have to forgive you'll have to forgive me because I thought, hey, I'll talk to about maybe 55 when they become, yep. you know, a senior. It's an yep. official senior, right? And what number did I give you? You told me 40. Right, and so think about your annuity mm -hmm. client. Are we in the same age range? Yes. So here's an opportunity to talk to that 40-year-old client if they're looking at annuity mm -hmm. solutions, annuity solutions with long-term care. Remember, stepping stone building phases. It's interesting how so many people, even this Gallup poll says 73% have their annuity as an emergency fund, which I yeah. find, which I thought it should be an income fund, but they say it's an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. So now, if I'm really going to use it as an emergency fund, my, and now I might as well have my long-term care in there to work as a dual emergency That's right. fund. That's right. Uh, these numbers, when we're talking about leverage, this is a huge issue because we're looking at taking non-qualified to be able to purchase three, six, nine years of LTC. There's yeah. some there's some really great annuities out there. There are. And they have really learned how to tailor their contract to fit the, per, the Pension Protection Act. That's right. So this is a huge, huge opportunity for advisors. That's right. In, in one of the earlier segments, you said to me, how do you start this conversation? Where do you begin it? So I'll go back to that second question, what are the key benefit drivers? This is a perfect way through process of elimination, if you hear the individual say to you, look, right now I'm really worried about growing my wealth, I'm worried about income protection and retirement, they're thinking about care planning because they've known somebody who's had an event. It's a great tack on story. Mm -hmm. When I go ahead and I talk about these things, and, I, and again, I'm trying to be, we're talking specifically right now on annuities, uh, so the annuities are the hottest market I've ever seen in mm -hmm. my since I've been around. Even with the lowest depressed interest rates, SPIAs, DIAs, GLWBs on index, they're all just huge. We've never sold as much as we've sold. And look at it in the environment. What yeah. happens when the interest rates go up? When I think about adding on to my annuity language, long-term care, and the ability to bring it up tax-free for the benefit, mm -hmm. for the LTC benefit, yep. to me, I, I think the leverage is just huge and it gives me something to talk about. Yeah, it does. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, Always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker dealer compliance officer. Miss an episode? Just go out to our video archives. And remember, you could be wiser as an educated advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you.